In this Lightroom video, I'm going to show you how you can sharpen your images to crisp up those important details. Now, there are a few different sharpening tools within Lightroom, but the place to begin is the detail panel, which you'll find down here. We can open up the detail panel and you can see we can uh, get a little preview here over our image and we could also perhaps zoom in over here. Now there are four sharpening sliders here to work with. First of all, we have the amount slider. Now this controls the overall strength of the sharpening effect. So if we increase the amount, then the image gets sharper. Now, when we're applying sharpening, all we're really doing here is applying localized contrast. If we think of edges in our image, like say this uh, little hair here, then when we increase the amount, what we're doing is brightening the lighter side of that hair and darkening the uh, edge of the hair around it. So I can double click the amount to reset it. And as I increase that sharpening amount, you can see we're increasing that contrast along those edge details. And the amount slider controls the overall change in contrast. Now, radius is slightly different. Radius controls the distance from edges in which that contrast change will occur. So if we increase the radius, you can see we push that change in contrast further away from edges in the image. And if we push things too far with radius, then we might begin to see halos appear around edges. So with an image with lots of detail like our dog here, it's usually best to keep the radius fairly low as a rule of thumb, somewhere around about one. Whereas with an image with more low frequency detail, lots of smooth areas like a portrait or a close up of a face, then uh, you might want to try increasing the radius slightly more. Now below radius we have detail and this controls how much that high frequency detail that is the the busy detail in the image it controls how much that detail is sharpened so a high detail value can often work really well over textures like the fur in the dog here if we zoom in a little closer here and try just decreasing and increasing the detail you can see it really helps to pull out a bit of extra detail in the dog's fur so i'm going to bring it up to around about there now with detail here we can hold alt and drag it and this gives us a grayscale view that helps us to judge the overall strength of the effect similarly with radius we can hold alt and drag that and that just gives us an idea of where those edges are being sharpened and how far from the edge that sharpening is occurring and if we hold Alt and drag the amount slider here, this just gives us a handy grayscale view of our image. Now we can also hold Alt and drag the masking slider. If we just zoom out to view our image full screen. Now with masking, this can be really handy for restricting the sharpening effect just to the areas that need it. Now we don't need to really sharpen the dark background of our image here because it's completely detailless. So there's really no point in sharpening that part of the frame. If we applied sharpening to that area, all we might do is amplify the image noise. So we don't really want to do that. We can use masking to restrict it. So I can hold Alt and drag the masking slider. And as I drag, areas will begin to show up in black. And these areas are gonna be excluded from the effects of our sharpening. So I can drag to a point where I'm only sharpening those details in the dog and leaving the rest of the image untouched. So it's worth experimenting with these sharpening settings. There's no right or wrong here. There's no magic formula that will get you the perfect amount of sharpening every time. It's just about experimentation. And uh, what you might find, if, if you're finding it difficult to judge the strength of a sharpening effect, sometimes I find it's useful just to push the sharpening amount too far because it can be easier to judge too much than too little. So then I can drag it down to a value that I think is acceptable. Now, as well as applying sharpening to the entire image, we can apply it selectively using the adjustment brush. So I can grab that from the toolbar over here. And if we scroll down through the adjustment brush uh, settings here, you can see we have a sharpness slider here. So we can increase the sharpness and we can paint to apply it selectively to areas of the frame. So I can hit O to view exactly where I've painted. So now you can see I'm sharpening this area here on the dog's head. I can hit O again to hide the mask overlay and then adjust the strength of the sharpness here to tweak things. Now we can also, of course, 
crisp up those details in other ways. We could perhaps increase the texture here as well, just to pull a bit more detail out of that area too. And if I toggle that uh, adjustment there off and on, you can see how we're able to selectively sharpen areas in this way. Now we can also find some really useful sharpening settings when we export our photos. So let's say we're ready to export the image to save it in a different file format. We can go to File, Export to do that. And in the settings here, you can see we can choose to resize our image. Let's perhaps uh, go to the resize to fit and we can choose a size here. Let's say we want to make a 12 by 8 inch print so we can set the width to 12 the height to 8 and the resolution will set to 300 pixels per inch now below this we have the output sharpening options and uh, we can check this and output sharpen for screen or print so i'm going to choose matte paper and then we have an amount setting here we can choose low standard or high and although the settings might seem quite basic they actually apply a really nice level of sharpening because they're optimized for those image sizing settings that we choose above and then of course we can export and save our file. So there we go, that's a few tips and tricks for getting really nice sharp photos in Lightroom.